Grace, mercy, and peace be from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Who here has met Siri before? Anybody met Siri? Okay, who knows who Siri is? Yeah, Siri is that little voice in your iPhone, if you have an iPhone. And you can ask Siri anything. And quite often people ask Siri important questions. For example, what is the meaning of life? And Siri has several responses to that. You can ask Siri, what is the meaning of life? And she might respond, I think that's odd that you ask a computer that. Or she might say, I don't know, I give up. Or she might say, 42. Does anybody know why she would say 42? If you don't understand, raise your hand if you understand 42. Okay, the rest of you, ask the people the hands up what 42 stands for. Okay, there's, there's a reason behind that. Uh, but her best answer is this. What is the meaning of life? All evidence up to date suggests it is chocolate. <laughs> so what is the meaning of life? We live in an age where this is what the meaning of life is thought about. But the meaning of life is nothing. And all you kids here in the front row, you are being bombarded every day at school with this idea. There is no God. Creation is just an accident. There is no meaning to life. And the rest of you with kids or grandkids, this is the message they are receiving day after day after day. And so your job as a Christ follower is to tell them that this is a lie. It is a lie straight from hell, straight from darkness, that there is a meaning to life. So if you can, take out your sermon notes for today and uh, look at the problem. We live in an increasingly atheistic society that fights against the idea that creation has a purpose. We are bombarded with the idea that we are no more than accidents suspended between accidents. And a lot of you here are on accident. Go ask your parents. And they will tell you, yeah, you're an accident. We weren't planning on you. And you're suspended between another accident that will eventually take your life. But the Bible says that this is not true. That we are created by God with functions and a purpose. And we can do no greater damage to humanity than to lose the purpose for life. So we're going to be studying a little bit of Genesis. Because Genesis talks about this idea about why we are here and where we came from. It talks about a God who created us. And so look how the Bible begins. In the beginning, God did what? Created the heavens and the earth. And the world viewpoint is that we are an accident. But the Bible says that we are a creation. And that God made everything out of nothing. And just that they're stuck here right now is proof of the existence of God. Uh, one author said this in her part A. This is a legal quote. For something to come from nothing, it must, in effect, create itself. Self-creation is a logical and rational impossibility. For something to create itself, it must be before it is. And this is impossible. Nothing anywhere, anytime, can create itself. So where did all this stuff come from? And we can all go back to school and say there was a big bang. Well, where did the big bang come from? And where did the stuff come from that created the Big Bang? And the Bible gives us an answer that our minds can't comprehend, but an answer that has a ring of truth to it. That there is an almighty, powerful being called God who has always existed. And He is the one that is the source of all creation. And He made it out of nothing. And that reminds me, who knows what God called His name uh, when Moses asked, Moses, what's your name? What did God say his name was? I, I am. am. Isn't that really cool? Moses, my name is I am that I am. I just have always been and always will be. And we are part of his creation. And uh, by the way, this uh, God who in the beginning created everything was a triune God at creation. There's always been God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Uh, St. Paul in Colossians wrote this, For by him, Jesus, all things were 
created. And so we live in this world where we need to communicate this idea that we are part of a creation. And uh, here at church, have I ever told you guys to get in a fight with somebody? No, I always tell you guys to be nice to each other, be kind, be loving. This is the first Sunday I'm going to tell you to get into fights. Reminds me of a fight that this couple had, and this wife was a terrible cook. And the husband came home, and the wife said, I have bad news, the dog ate our dinner. And the husband said, that's okay, we can get another dog. <laughs> that started a fight. We are to fight over this idea that we are created from God. That this is the worldview that we need to preach to the world. That in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, one author said this. We need to communicate that what is at issue is not the specifics of evolution versus specifics of Genesis. Rather, at issue is the worldview claim that life is the product of impersonal forces versus the claim that life was designed by an intelligent agent. We must fight worldview with worldview. So what is your worldview? Are you viewing yourself as a creation of God or just an accident waiting for the next accident to lead you into nothingness? Those are two very different ways to live life and to view life. One, that your creation is very hope-filled. There is a God who understands your problems, your sins, and He loves you unconditionally. Versus you are nothing going to nothing. We are people that have hope because we are creations of God. And that hope is so important to life. Uh, this week I had to do something very, very sad. And meet with a little six-year-old girl. And her dad only has a few weeks left to live. And she asked me, what's going to happen when my daddy dies? Where is he going to go? And I could share with her the hope of the cross. That when her daddy dies, he will be in heaven. And that she can continue to talk to her daddy through Jesus. That she can say, Jesus, tell my dad I love him. And Jesus will walk up to her dad in heaven and say, hey, your, your six-year-old sent you a message, and here's the message, I love you, or here's what I did today, or this is what's going on in my life. Because there is a creator who has suffered and died for us, we are people of hope. And we have now a purpose, and our purpose is to give glory to God. And uh, one of the things I want you all to try this week is to every day to give glory to God. To every day sing his praises. If you don't know how to do that, take out a Bible. If you need a Bible, let me know. We'd be glad to give you one. And just open up to the Psalms. And the Psalms are full of verses of glory and praise. Uh, if you have your Bible with you, you might want to open to Psalm 146. Because Psalm 146 begins with praise and adoration. And if you don't have time to, to look it up, look it up when the sermon gets boring. But it's a really good psalm of adoration. And look what it says. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praises to my God as long as I live. And you can read the rest of that psalm. But you are a creation of God, and you are designed to give praise to this God who loves sinners who loves people who makes big, big mistakes, who pays for their sins on the cross. Uh, they go down to uh, that life of praising God, this one author said, the easiest way to discover the purpose of an invention is to ask the creator of it. The same is true for discovering your life purpose. Seek God's revelation as found in the scriptures. So we are a creation of God, we are not gods. We will not become a god. We are created to worship God. And we have been made in the image of God. And go down to a point two and look what it says. Then God said, let us, that's the Trinity, make man in our image after our likeness. And that is such an important verse because it gives dignity to all of humanity. And this is what the Christian faith did that a lot of you don't understand. Before the, there were men and then there were women. There were slaves and there were the owners. 
There were the rich and the poor, boys and girls and adults. People were divided up into different groups with different values. In comes Jesus, and all people are of value. The sinners and the saints, the young and the old, the men and the women, they are all equally valued here in the church community. And then the church began to see that it's, its calling was to care for the least of these. And so Jesus would tell stories like, who knows what story that is? Anybody want to guess this? Yeah, the Good Samaritan. This is our calling to praise God and to serve our fellow man, especially those that are poor and weak or addicted or struggling, that we are to extend love to these people. Uh, in Psalm 146, God says, The Lord watches over the aliens, sustains the fatherless and the widow, and he frustrates the way of the wicked. And so we as a church community, this is our calling to praise God and to find ways to serve our fellow man. And if this is your calling to be of service to others, you might want to join our church care team. We meet twice a month, and then we go just care for people in their time of need. So create to care for others. But this also means that we have responsibilities as God's creation. And if you look at the middle of that second page, are you a good steward for your creator? And a steward is something that takes care of someone else's stuff. That you are to manage the stuff God has given you, that it might bring him glory. You are a manager who is both a saint and a sinner. And so daily we come to the cross and seek God's forgiveness. As a steward, our job is to love and to give love to the people around you. And so all of you, as I tell you quite often, your big task today is to find another human being and say, I love you. And to find another human being and give them the love that they are seeking. And that you are here to serve, not to be served. And again, I've said this over and over again. If you want to find joy in life, find a way to serve other people. This is where joy is found, in being a person loving and caring for other human beings. And then know that one day you will have to give an account to God of your life. So we are created, we are given dignity, we have been given responsibility. So what do you do with today's sermon? So now what? God is the giver of life. You have purpose and a destiny. And let's read this last part together, part number four. Ready? And God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. There is a God who has created you and given you life. And you are not an accident. You are an amazing creation of God. And here's a fact you might know about. Uh, your human body has a lot of different chromosomes. And each one of those chromosomes has 20 billion bits of information that would fill 4,000 textbooks. Humans are truly, exquisitely, and intricately designed human beings. But God not only created you, He wants to recreate you. And I like the saying, God formed us, sin deformed us, Jesus can what? Transform us. And this is our hope that transformation can take place. We don't have to be what we are today. That through the power of God, we can be different. And the first difference is claiming forgiveness of letting God cleanse you of all those stupid things that you have done, that you might have new life. Again, at the bottom of your sermon notes, this is what Paul says about Jesus. He is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. And so in Jesus, we are recreated, we are redeemed, we are peace, we are strengthened, we are forgiven, we are made new, we are full of hope, we are free, we are able. 
So the big lie that you kids are being told all the time is what? That you're just an accident. There's no meaning to life. You gotta fight that lie. You are a creation of God and you were made for a purpose to worship God and to love one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.